Good afternoon, everyone. It's really quite something to be here um, after the wonderful speeches that we've had from so many people. And today, I'd like to tell you about uh, what you can do. And the organization that I work with is called Microfinance Without Borders. And so many of us have talked about um, connecting and being out there without borders. And so I would just like to carry on with that theme. And uh, you notice that I'm wearing this top, which is from Guatemala. When I left um, college in the United States many years ago, I had the fortune to go into the United States Peace Corps. And I was sent to this town in Guatemala, in the highlands. And I started working with the Mayan women there. We were all women in our 20s. We were working alongside one another. And this is the blouse that they wear. And we were doing nutrition and childcare classes. And then one day, one of the women came to me. Her name is Reina Isabel Iku Kutsal. And she said, why don't we start, because um, we were already selling some of the weavings to the other Peace Corps volunteers. And she said, um, why don't we start making these purses? And so we started. And over the last 42 years, I don't know how many millions of these purses have been sold around the world now. And that was when we started something from the bottom up. It was from the idea of my friends. And we worked together. We were successful. And one way or another, that has had a tremendous social and financial impact on the life of that community. They've had terrible civil wars in Guatemala. They've had uh, the worst earthquake in the Western Hemisphere in the 20th century. And they're still going strong, one way or another. And so for me, that was one of the most satisfying things in my life, to see how we could do things from the ground up like that and working alongside with the people. So then I went to Kenya, and I was teaching in this boy's secondary school. And this was in 1968. And at that time, they changed the syllabus from the time when the white man came to back to the year 1000. And the boy said to me, Mwalimu, that's Swahili for teacher, no, we want to learn from when the white man came. And I said, no, it's from the year 1000. Anyway, they wouldn't have it. So in the holiday, I asked them to go and speak to their tribal elders and define their own oral history. And they did that. And they came back to me and they said, Mwalimu, we now know we have a history. And we will study from the year 1000. Again, that was something from the bottom up. They had to go and find out for themselves about that. I couldn't just say to them, do it because I say so, or do it because that's a syllabus. I know that doesn't work. So now I'm going to go ahead to the year 2008. And this is Kibera, which is the largest slum in Kenya. Some of you may have seen that film, The Constant Gardener. That was filmed in Kibera. Kenya, unfortunately, has given a gift to the world in this term, post-election violence. At the end of 2007, there was the worst violence that erupted in Kenya, and this carried on until 2008. Kibera was a place where there was the most violence in all of Kenya. It was burning. And I'm going to tell you about two men who were gang leaders in that violence. Two of them in the back against the wall. The one with the jeans on and the scarf is Bernard. And then the one next to him, looking straight at you, is John Oomo. And John was the leader of 200 youths. And in Kibera, they took over Toy Market, which had 1,700 stalls. They first looted it, then they burnt it down completely. Bernard and John are Luos. That's the tribe that President Obama's father is from. 
and they took it over. The police <laughs> couldn't get in there. The district commissioner couldn't get in there. No one could get in there. But one man did walk in there. And he was the branch manager of a microfinance institution. And this is Andrew Otieno. He's in his clinic. He also has a clinic in Kibera. He's a Luo, too. And one day he walked in there. People told him, don't go in there. They will kill you. But he went in there anyway. And John ordered him to be killed. And that was the first time that his people, his gang, didn't obey him. But John didn't speak to Andrew. The next day, Andrew went back. Andrew's a father, he's got two children, he's got a wife. He went back. And John thought to himself, this is what John told me this July, he thought to himself, who is this man that he will come in here? John went back home. And the third day, Andrew came back again. And this time, John talked to him. And Andrew said, you've got to lay down your arms. In Kibera, we have every tribe in this country. This place belongs to everyone. 1,700 people have lost their livelihood. So John and Bernard and the others agreed to lay down their arms. And within a short while, Jamibora, the microfinance institution that was founded by a Swedish woman and 50 beggars, they surveyed that. They made it so that there would be 3,000 stalls. Within two days, they got the tin sheets, they got the poles, and John and Bernard and the other youth started helping them to rebuild. They couldn't believe that Jami Boro would allow them to help to rebuild, to take part in this. And within a short time, they rebuilt the market so that people could start getting their lives back together, could start getting to work. And John and Bernard got emergency loans, and they started making what they know how to do to make these metal boxes and other things, they're metal workers. And now today, John and, Adv John and Bernard are some of the greatest advocates for microfinance. So I will tell you what they're doing by the time I finish this talk, but I just want to talk a bit more about microfinance. You may have heard about it. So I want you to meet Tabitha. Tabitha is a Kikuyu and her husband is a Luo. Actually, they got divorced as a result of this post-election violence. She lost everything. Her house got burnt out. She walked out with the clothes on her back and her three daughters. Now, 15 months later, this is Tabitha. She sells maize in the market. She has got back on her feet. Her three, school, her three daughters are at school. They are, she's paying their school fees. She's back to the income level she was before the post-election violence. She's a member of Jamibora, and with our organization, because we're working with Jamibora to create business training for entrepreneurs, she's a star of our business training because we feel that the best people to learn from are the people at the grassroots. And so we're using smart technology to make that happen working alongside them. Now, microfinance is based on trust. And there's a range of services that you can see here. But the key thing is that it's based on trust, because poor people, by virtue of the fact that they're poor, have no collateral. But that's also the strength of microfinance. And what we're looking is to find the missing middle you need small enterprises to make an economy grow. It won't work if everybody is kept at the micro level. So that's why we're working with Microfinance Without Borders. We're working with this innovative microfinance institution started by beggars. We're working with them so that people can start working their way up using finance, but what we're calling hands-on training, because we give training to people here who work in the field developing this business training, and then later on people are able from here to do strategic mentoring using smart technology. But we're looking for that missing middle. 
how people can grow their enterprises so that they can employ other people. We don't want everyone just to stay where it's only a family business, but to take that leap forward. So here's one of our strategic mentors, and this is David Kamau, who's a utensil seller in Kibera Market, and he's featuring in our training. So this is a way that we're able to pass on the wisdom of micro-entrepreneurs to other micro-entrepreneurs and to reach more in our business training. And also, we have people like Ingrid is here in the audience today. She was with me. She was taking the videos. And this is Pamela, who's one of the trainers. And we're working alongside so that Pamela's also learning how to create these training programs. And I would like for you to look at that word in the middle there, Ubuntu, which comes from South Africa. And it is, I am because we are. And this is one of the things, the gifts that we can see from working at the grassroots, is that there is this connectivity. In Swahili, the word is pamoja, which means together. Now, there's a lot of interest in social finance, of which microfinance is one part. And it is coming from the banks because they want to use their financial innovation to find ways that they can do things that have a social impact that's measured. Because we realize that our old system does need to be adjusted. It needs to have Ubuntu. And also, there are people like yourselves. And there's also governments that realize that it makes a lot of sense to have social impact also embedded in what we're doing. And there is that need so that we can get that missing middle going. So here's some statistics about social finance, of which microfinance plays one part. We do have screening for ethical investment. That's sort of like a base level. We have clean technology. We have community development. And we also have microfinance as one part of this. So microfinance is part of a bigger whole. So now we are at this moment in history where we are looking at how can we redesign our financial services? How can we redesign things so that we have more Ubuntu in it? So that we have more of what Africa is especially good for, which is this connectivity, which is this communal aspect, which so many of us have perhaps lost in our search for individuality. And so we're looking for ways that we can do things from the bottom up, where we can have hands-on training. As I said, we give classes about microfinance here so people can be prepared for the field work, where you can do meaningful field work. There's nothing wrong with going and building a school, but we have to think of what are all the other things that go with a school. So that's why we're working within an organization and we're working alongside the people and that we have that connectivity after people come back. You can go for as short as three weeks, get a relationship, and then we have strategic mentoring using smart technology. The other thing that we have, um, you probably can't see this, but this is a Maasai woman using a mobile phone to do a money transfer. We're using smart technology with mobile phones. Kenya is getting um, the broadband um, in a big way. They've got a fiber optic cable. Other countries are going to have this happening. We have got um, a software. Um, it's, it's, a, it's like a Facebook with three dimensions that we're going to be introducing so that what we're doing, we're going to be showcasing at the Microcredit Summit in April 2010. We'll be showcasing our micro-entrepreneurs training, our training that we do for people here, and also um, work that we're doing with this uh, software so that we have connectivity with other organizations so that we can go and work with other microfinance institutions. So all of this makes up um, back to, brings us back to John and Bernard, who you see here with their football team, which they've called Kibera Celtic. The Celtic is because a filmmaker went to Kibera to make a film, and he's a Celtic supporter, and they got inspired by that. So they've called their team Kibera Celtic. You can see they have the Celtic flag in the middle. And in fact, 
the Celtic team, that famous team from Scotland, it was started in the slums in Glasgow, and it has um, a social mission that it helps people in need, and it has been doing that for, for decades. So John and Bernard realized that what they did was not okay, leading that gang of youths. They were youths at risk, and so they've started Kibera Celtic for youths at risk. They've just been to Burundi working with ex-combatants there because this is a problem across, well, across the world with disaffected youths. And this is the social enterprise that we're developing together. I have a small grant, and they are going to get a loan. It's not going to be given as a grant, but that money is going to be used as a guarantee fund for the loan that they get for the chicken farm that we're going to start this month in Kibera that will provide training. We're going to document that for our small business training, but also it will give small amounts of money to the football players so that they can then start saving money and get loans for their own enterprises. So this is another part of our hands-on training. So there's an African proverb that I would like to leave you with. Well, I will leave you with another thing after this. But as if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. So this is John with his son Austin. John had to spend two months convincing his wife after everything had stopped in Kibera, after the violence had stopped. He had to spend two months to convince her that he had changed. And he said to me, there is nothing quite like my son calling me daddy. So this is the face of microfinance. It's not just women, but it's also men and boys, as well as the women who have shouldered a lot of the responsibility also getting involved. And this is where you can be involved. This is what you can do. You can take part in our hands-on training and it is linked to this long-term field project work that we're doing so that you actually get a chance to be involved at the grassroots. You can sponsor some of our micro-entrepreneurs business training, or you can invest in developing our MWB, our Microfinance Without Borders um, infrastructure. We're building this from the ground up, and I'm talking about people in the city here, or it's also the ground up, people coming to our courses because they want to do something where they can make a difference, where they can have hands-on and be long-term involved, just as the people in Kenya are. And I leave you with the African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together.